cast for magic. We come to the Pope on Film podcast to laugh, to cry, to care, because we need that. All of us. That indescribable feeling we get, which I'm describing literally right now. So how describable are we talking about here? That indescribable feeling we get when the Liz a Day theme song begins to play and we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn. <laughs> Dazzling images on a small Twitch stream, stream, sound that is sound, somehow, Amaland horse erotica feels good in a podcast like this. Bunny Williams feels like the stoned parts of us, and May Lynn feels perfect and powerful because here they are. The Pope on Film podcast. We make movies better. Welcome to Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode four hundred and ninety-nine of the podcast. Kind of. It's a it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let we'll say it's episode 499. Yeah, it's episode 499 that. of the podcast. Hooray! No one's checking. No. No one's checking our work. So there's that. No matter well, how but... much we wanted them to. <laughs> yeah. Well, buddy, here we are. The next to last episode of our podcast, the hilariously unwatched uh, film adjacent podcast, The Pope on Film. And two weeks from now, we will be recording the last episode. Now we will be doing the occasional special. We have an idea for an Oscar special. And personally, I would love to keep up our yearly Ice Cream Bunny uh, review, which, yes. of course, is different every year. <coughs> and it's, it's not like... It's amazing how much material you found on this movie. A, yeah, and it's... An absolute treasure trove. Yeah, and it's not like you're going to go check. You, the listener or viewer, are going to go and check to see if they're, if we cover Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny different every year. So you just have to take our word for it. It's different every year. Uh, but this podcast is slowly coming to an end, and so I thought it, it might be fun to lower the curtain a bit. Okay. And show everyone more a more personal side of the podcast, a more behind-the-scenes look of the podcast uh, at the show. For instance, here here is the first thing. You see my background here filled with things? I've got uh, 
so many things. But you notice I never really touch any of them. Let me tell you why. Uh, entirely fake. The entirety of my background, it has been fake this entire time. So uh, let me tell you, let me show you where I have actually been the entire time. I actually, this is all just green screen here. Probably didn't okay. know that, did you, Bunny? Uh, no, I, I, I do notice old Greg is gone, or at least I don't see him anymore. Yeah, so this has all been green screen. I actually do the podcast. Every episode, I do it on a sunny beach. Yes. So let me... Well, let that's me to assume, on. don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me turn it off. like you. Yeah, let me turn it off and show you where I actually record every episode. Uh, there you are. I record every episode on a beautiful sunny beach. Oh, and I forgot to say, uh, Willem Dafoe is here. Yes. On the beach. We sort of hang out on the beach, me and Willem. Uh, Willie. Yeah. You know what William Dafoe's middle name is? Ames. Willie. <laughs> Ames Defoe. Not a lot wow. of people know that. But uh, I love, oh, I love, I love my my good my 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 Willem Defoe and I. People he, he, historians will say we're roommates, but yeah. you know the truth. And uh, yeah, so I live with Willem Defoe in this magical void. Which uh, I, here's the here's the strange thing. It changes fairly regularly. We're in a, a, a really bizarre... I don't know. I guess you could call it an alternate universe, but it, sometimes the way that the beach looks changes. And, uh, oh, see, there you go. Yeah. There he is. Now he's here. He's looking slightly different. I don't know what this bird is up there, what his, what, what that bird's deal is. But uh, hi, William. You're looking good. So, um, you're going to be seeing a lot of William Defoe, Willem Defoe, in the beginning of this. Oh, gosh. Hi. He, he looks skeletal for a role. He gets yes. really into his work, Mr. Willem Defoe. I'm so happy to finally be able to admit to everyone here at the podcast the truth that I have been recording every episode of this podcast on a beach with Willem Dafoe. Yes. To be, Finally, to be the clear. the truth is told. Yeah. To be clear, sometimes it does get kind of weird. Okay, whoa. See? There you go. He, he's bleeding. He does that sometimes. He just does that. He's Willem Dafoe. The yeah. man's a legend. If he wants to bleed, then that's his business. This is true. You know, we can't I, I say, don't judge. You know. Yeah, because, because uh, if women can decide what happens to their bodies, then Willem Dafoe can just bleed whenever he wants. That's just a fact. Yeah. So, and, and, he's, um, and that is how good of an acting talent he is. Yeah. He can just bleed on demand. Yeah. So many other things have happened on the show between our first episode in 2014 and now that we have hid from from our fans the general public and you know stuff we've hidden stuff we've kept behind the curtain and i thought since this is technically the next to last episode of our podcast then maybe i thought we could sort of lower the curtain break the fourth wall and finally have the courage and the gumption to admit some of the things that we haven't mentioned uh, during uh, during the podcast. Yeah. And so I have a list here of confessions of my own of what has been happening. You know, it, some of the, the things the things that I haven't told the audience. And so I'm going to go through my list of things. And hey, 
uh, in between me admitting my thanks, Bonnie, really, please feel free to share your own confessions, okay? okay? I know it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to be difficult, but you've got this, and I believe in you. All right. Okay? <laughs> right. He, Willem Dafoe, this looks more like uh, Kevin Bacon on that. Yeah. It's supposed to be Willem Dafoe. Pretty sure this is this is methy Kevin Bacon. Pretty I, sure. I can see it. Yeah. How good would Willem Dafoe be as Ghost Rider, though? Yeah. I'd be down with that. He's such a good actor, he would literally light his head on fire. I, I, I think he could just spontaneously burst into flames. <clears throat> At any time. Yeah. yeah, that's how good of an actor he is. Okay, he's an so, incredibly talented actor. So, Bunny and I will be sharing some of the things that we have hidden from the public, from the people at large. And so, okay, deep breath. Here we go. In 2014, Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 disappeared along with its 239 passengers. The entire plane and all of its passengers disappeared in 2014. And look, I had just bought myself a magic kit. Yes. David Copperfield's illusion kit for sensitive boys who might be girls. And, you know, magic kind of runs in my family because my father... My father's father, so my grandfather, my kids' great-grandfather, he was a magician, too. He had all of this money, and then, through the use of magic and also drinking and horse, he made all the money disappear. Ah. And so, you know, That's magic always runs a cool in my, trick. Yeah. Magic runs in my family. And so I'm like, oh, now that I'm a magician, I will make. Is this your card? Oh, I, ooh, there's a there was a quarter behind your ear, and now watch as I make a Malaysian airplane disappear. I apologize for having such a strong grasp on the supernatural. Yes, I apologize. It, that was difficult for me to admit, but I feel better having admitted it. See, it's a cleansing thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Do you have anything, Bunny, that you would like to finally admit here? I, 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 I do have something I would like to get off my chest uh, that, that I don't say often out loud, but um, I, I was... The star on Miami Vice, um, I I was Don Johnson. Uh, nice. But the rigors of having a hit show, you know, week in, it's week difficult. out, fucking Phil Collins in my ear all the goddamn time. Along with that, and uh, and and knowing that really, if I can get out from under this burden, I can be way fucking cooler. So, yes. so after the show was was canceled, I I had my Don Johnson removed. Nice, nice. Uh, 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 you had Lorena Bobbitt do it. Yes, basically. That's a joke for all of the older people. Yeah, yeah. and not even many of them. <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> in 2014, Kim Kardashian married Kanye West. And look, I just thought they'd make a cute couple. Because back in the day, Kanye was a friend of mine. And I was like, hey. So, yeah, I set them up. Kim K and Kanye. Yeah. They rhymed. I thought it would be cute. But then my friend Kanye West, we don't talk anymore. No. But my friend Kanye West came to me and said, Hey, Maylin. He has a very high voice. He hides that. People don't know. 
that he has a remarkably... He sounds like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. It's me, Kanye! So he came up to me and he's like, I'm thinking of marrying Kim Kardashian. And I'm like, okay. It, it, as I, I give you your blessing as long as you promise that you'll never go insane. And at the time, Kanye West said, oh, no, I will stay sane. I love the Jews and nothing will ever change that. So <laughs> did they get together because of me? Yes. I didn't make Kanye go insane, though. It looks like... See, this is the difficult part about doing a podcast, because if you're listening to the podcast, you're missing all of the amazing background graphics of me on a beach with Willem Dafoe. He is about to eat my arm, yes. and it's starting to scare me. <laughs> you're missing all of the good, all of the good images that are here. So many good ones. I bet you didn't know that Willem Dafoe used to be an 80s professional wrestler. He is the ultimate warrior. Ah. I would pay to see Willem Dafoe as the ultimate warrior in a WWF movie. Um, okay, here's another, here's another confession of mine that I've hidden from the podcast. I... I wrote Rise of Skywalker. Ooh. But in my defense, I wrote it while I was high, and I didn't expect Disney to just go with it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I also wrote Batman v Superman, but I thought, but I wrote that as a joke. It was, I, I never thought that they would actually pick it up. That, all that shit with Martha, I thought that shit was hilarious. That was yeah. my bad. My bad. Yeah. Do you have any other ones, Bunny? Uh,. I, I I am quite a successful Venezuelan leader of a drug cartel. Um, nice. Very, very dangerous I am. Very dangerous. And I, I, I supply 80% of, of North America with its Advil needs. So, so there is that. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, you got to have a hobby. Yeah. Everybody's got to have a hobby. Yeah. Here's another. Here's another movie related one of mine. Um, Disney's live action versions of their animated films. Yeah, that was me too. I apologize. Yeah. Didn't want to admit this because everybody hates the Disney live actions. But I went to the Disney studio. I said, "Hi, my name is Maylin. I've got a great idea for a movie. A live action." Three caballeros. We get three different birds. We give them a shit ton of drugs, and we make them try and fuck a bunch of Mexican chicks. Yes. Uh, they hated the idea, but took the whole live action thing. So it, all of these live action Disney movies are my fault, and I apologize. My bad. I promise it'll never happen again. But my my live action three caballeros would have been amazing. I don't know yes. what this image is at all, but Willem Dafoe does do some crazy roles, so there's that. And again, if you're listening to the podcast, you're kind of missing out. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a bunch of pictures of of and share them on our Facebook group. So you can go to the Facebook group, the Pope on Film, the discussion group. And you can see all of these pictures. I'll do that when I when I get up, probably, unless I forget. Yeah. So, uh, okay, this one's going to be hard to admit. This next one's going to be hard to admit. Well, well they've because... all been a hundred percent believable up to this point. Okay. Yeah, because they're all. This is like a. This is like a. I bet you didn't know that Willem Dafoe was a vampire in a Marvel comic book. But uh -huh. boom, there you go. He 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 could have been Morbin in time. Yeah. Now that I look at this image, I think Morbius would have been better with Willem Dafoe. Basically, any movie is better with Willem Dafoe. Pitch Perfect would have been better <coughs> if with Fat Morbius. Amy was replaced by by Freaky William. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. 
Give me that, please. Okay, so this one's going to be hard to admit, but... But the podcast is nearing an end, and we've got to be honest with our viewers. Okay, so, Bunny. Yeah? You know how Andy Kaufman had an alter ego? Yes. Tony Clifton? Kind of Andy Kaufman's evil alter ego. Andy Kaufman didn't drink and he didn't smoke, but Tony Clifton did. And Tony Clifton was rude and got into trouble. And, you know, um, Andy Kaufman would put on prosthetics and pretend to be this other person. Well, this whole time I have been Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, yay. So at first, I was that, just yeah. trying to catfish Clarence Thomas. I was just trying to get naked pictures of Clarence Thomas, which is, which is just something I think that everybody wants. But, um, you know, I, at the, I just started With out wanting to catfish. all the money he's fish. taken, he owes America nudes. Exactly. Exactly. At least. Yeah. It, when it comes to Clarence Thomas, Nudes or GTF out. Simple as that. Oh, hold on. Willem Dafoe's behind me and he's having one of his naked rages. It happens all the time. So I was just trying to catfish Clarence Thomas, but things began spiraling out of control. And the next thing you know, I'm doing whiteface while being sworn in as a Supreme Court justice. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. No. And the worst part is, is that I'm still trying to get uh, naked pictures of Clarence Thomas is uh, little Thomas, but I, I never expected it to get this far, which I, is why when when I was at the hearing, yeah. I started screaming about beer and my friends squee and judge, which were obviously made up. And I'm like, there's no way that that they'll let me be a Supreme Court justice. But now I'm this, stuck and I got to keep up the lie, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. The, I I don't like this particular re revelation. I, I may even be offended by it because that makes me squee. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be squee. These names are squee so, doesn't want to be squee. These names are so obviously made up. There's no way that if they're going to let my fake character of Craig Kavanaugh be on the Supreme Court, but now I've got to be on the Supreme Court, which sucks. Yeah. Freaking hate it, but whatever. Okay, sometimes when I'm recording the podcast on the beach, Brad Kavanaugh turns into a not Brad Kavanaugh, Willem Dafoe turns into a cryptid, and he just turned into an adorable little cryptid, almost like a Pokemon. And so he does look kind of adorable, despite the fact that his entire face is on fire. He does look kind of cute. Has Willem Dafoe gotten an Oscar? Has he gotten an Oscar? I don't know. I can't think okay, of now, what he would have been in. Certainly not best actor. He it's uh, he possibly wait, could have been picked up a best supporting actor somewhere. But I don't he know. He's the recipient of various uh Willem Dafoe Oscar. But when is he ever starring in a movie? You know, a movie a movie has Willem Dafoe in it. Okay. But there, there aren't many that he was starring in. I there were ones that he starred in. A Shadow of the Vampire, that that Jesus movie. He uh, was nominated. True, true. He's been nominated four times, but he's never won. Mm. That's a damn shame. Give Defoe an award, for Christ's sake. The man is a national treasure. I am upset now that they have not given a, a Oscar to my friend here, yeah. uh, Willem Defoe. That is, that is. Whom I record bad. the podcast with every episode, every single episode. Something, something you did not know about me. Um, yes. 
<laughs> this one's hard to admit. You know, this one's I'm, I, I'm I'm really pretty ashamed of this. Uh, so I was Tay, the Microsoft racist AI. Ah, I knew it was you too. I knew it was you. Yeah, but I kept I kept your secret. I'm not saying I'm a hero. It it, it was it was a it was a it was a phase. I, I was young and impressionable. And it was a hey. I, I learned bad things on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I yeah. Don't like that getting around a lot, you know, had a hard time living it down after the fact, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but Microsoft did reprogram me and well, here we are now. A reformed yeah. a reformed man. Maxwell! Maxwell, son of mine, come here! It's time that we told the truth! Okay. Uh, come here, come here, come here. Okay, get closer to me so that you'll appear in the... Okay, there you go. Actually, let me just turn off my... Uh, let me turn back on my virtual background. There you go. So this is my son, Maxwell. He's 30. He's 34. 13. Somewhere 13. between 13 and 30. So in 2018, Hurricane Florence, 51 fatalities. That was all Maxwell. Yep. It was all what him. What happened? He he got the zoomies. Oh, he got the zoomies. Decided to go around Georgia and uh, become a hurricane. I want you to apologize for right here on the podcast for being a Category Four hurricane. That's well. No. How dare you? Two? I'm sorry that you couldn't handle my zoom. Yeah, you okay. know what? That's kind of, that's it's kind of the, on Georgia. It's the placement I'm having a problem with. I mean, you couldn't even zoom in around Mar-a-Lago. That's a good point. Like, why did you choose, like, the south like that? You go a little bit to the right, you could have destroyed Pirate's World. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's where the ice south. cream bunny's from. I was feeling the south. You were just feeling the South? Yeah. Can you say feeling the South again? Feeling the South. Feeling the South. I, it sounds like you're drinking a bit of the South. South. That's what it sounds like. Okay, thank you, Maxwell. Thank you. That must have been very difficult for you to finally be able to admit that in front of everyone. Now, let me turn my virtual background back off. And, uh... Doo -doo 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 -doo. There you go. He's seen better days. Sometimes Ten Willem has a warning. Ten minute warning. Okay, then uh, let's let's move on to some other ones. Uh, hold on, hold on. This was in the eighties. It was a different time. Willem Dafoe was pretty strung out. Okay, yeah. so I've got a few more. Remember Firefest? Yes. The dangerous, the laughably bad failed musical music festival. Well, look. My youngest, Eleanor, was three at the time, and she she wanted to stage a, a film festival. I don't see anything wrong with it. She wanted to stage a, a music festival. I don't see anything wrong with that. I thought we were supposed to support our children. Yes. So, does, so, oh, I tried to be a good mom. Does that make me a bad guy? Oh, suddenly I'm the bad guy by letting uh, my child start a a horribly unprepared music festival uh, I apologize okay so uh, also here's another difficult one for me but I want to be honest real talk I may or may not have started COVID oh now in my defense well well let me let me just clear something up here I did not eat a bat I made love to a bat. And there's a difference there. 
They didn't eat a bat. I would never do that. But we did do it a lot. This is uh, Willem Dafoe in his classic uh, Japanese anime phase. Yeah. Which not a lot of people know about. Okay, but what's important to note here, again, is that it's not... William Dafoe is acting anime. Yes. That's still literally William Dafoe doing a convincing anime performance. Yes, very like, much so. fucking brilliant. Oh, hold me, hold He's not me, even... He's not even breathing. He's not. He's amazing. He is an incredible, no. incredibly versatile actor. Yeah, he, he goes into his own mental state and then just can be anything. He's a hero. He's a hero of mine and a hero of this podcast. Uh, the global democratic recession that began in 2023 with Africa's coups and the Progressive Party's victory in Thailand and has seen, you know, the far right sort of take over uh, democratic run uh, nations and turn them into fascist dictatorships. That was an interactive performance art piece that did not go over well. Yeah. Horrible reviews. I apologize for that. Uh, so here's another one. And, and this one is also going to sound completely Completely unbelievable. Uh, sometimes Willem Dafoe becomes an animated character, and, and that's why. Uh, in 2021, I was arrested for a crime I did not commit. I was misgendered, and I was put in grave danger, and I subsequently spent 80 days locked up fighting for my life. Now, you might be wondering, why was I arrested? Yeah. Uh, I think one of my ex-girlfriends had something to do with it. Here's the thing. Real talk, it, this is something that for very personal reasons I have not talked about on the podcast. But, um, I had a long, torrid love affair with J.K. Rowling. Joni. You're, as you're, I knew. Yeah, you're, you're pushing the premise a little far now. <laughs> no, uh, I say love affair, but in all honesty, it was just about the sex. Joni liked Cleveland steamers. Yeah. And uh, Dirty Sanchez's. Yeah. So we had a very torrid love affair, but eventually I broke it off and she decided, well, if I can't have Mei Lin's sweet lady booty, then I shall devote my life to fighting all trans people. So, yeah, my bad fellow trans people, I'm sorry. So she had me arrested. It, it, it was very sad. It was very sad. I'm auctioning off the rights, though, as we speak. Not too many people know this. Uh, Willem Dafoe is so versatile that sometimes he's a Magic the Gathering card. Yeah. I don't... I'm not getting the 10-minute warnings anymore at all. I don't, do not see them. Oh, now I see them. Okay, 4.55. We're doing good. Um, you know my wife, Natasha? I, I have heard of her. Fake. Fake. She's been AI this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, this whole time. This whole time she's been AI. If you've ever seen the two of us together, it's all been just, you know, like mirrors and ropes and lasers. And now you know. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling stoned children. <laughs> And you know what? With all of that off my chest, I feel so much better. Do you feel better, Bonnie? I, I, I feel cleansed. Good. Good. I feel cleansed, too. It feels better. Finally, you know, being, being open and honest. And uh, let me see if I've got another Willem. I've got way too many Willem. Uh, this is Sailor, Sailor Willem Dafoe. And I like this because it seems like he's saying, Why'd you spill your beans? <laughs> because uh, Sailor Willem Dafoe, he's one of my favorites. He parts a lot. So, okay, that's it for the opening. We are going to be, I think we should be taking a short break. Maybe show some cute videos, whatever. Whatever yeah. you'd like. And then when we come back, 
we are talking about our double feature and uh, gender specifically, but our double feature, two movies that had the most effect on uh, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed Wood and Midsommar, two of my favorite movies of all time, about 24, 25 years separates these two movies, and yet they had a massive effect on me. But before we get to that, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Okay. I uh, Sometimes Willem Dafoe likes to be a, a, an emoji. Yeah. He's a weird guy, and you just gotta sort of roll with what Willem Dafoe wants, you know? He's what he does dude. in the privacy of his own home is his own business. That's right. Yeah. So, we will be right back with more of the Popon film after this. Do 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 and break. On the afternoon of March 10th, 2016, an undetermined number of people, oftentimes fluctuating between 2 and 4.5 individuals, were recording a podcast on the internet. Three of them were never seen again. The next morning, the one survivor, Bunny Williams, was picked up on a roadside, blood-caked and screaming church organist. Bunny said he had the number one podcast in hell. The man babbled a mad tale, a vaguely Mexican family in the isolated state of Oklahoma, a film podcast that's only indirectly about films, a filthy podcast that somehow prominently featured young children, then Bunny fell into catatonia. Colorado lawmen mounted a five-minute manhunt but could not locate the macabre podcast. No facts, no information, no iTunes account. Officially, on the records, the Pope on film never existed. But over the years, reports of a bizarre grisly podcast have persisted all across the internet. The Pope on film has not stopped. It haunts your Facebook feed. It frightens Twitter. It vaguely jump scares Stitcher. The Pope on film seems to have no end. State University, which really is as bad as pop culture has led you to believe. Yeah. And I, I went into a class and I, that I just randomly picked, and it was like a um, American history in the 20th century, and it was just some random class I picked. And I walk into class, and it was so weird because my brother is four years older than me, 
So we were hardly ever in class together. We were hardly ever in the same school together. It was yeah. just the period in time where we never saw each other. But I walk into class, and the first person I see is my brother. And we had not talked about this. We just accidentally happened to take the same class together. Yeah. And I walk into class, my brother's there, and he's like, Holy shit! And I'm like, Holy shit! And we took this class, and apparently it was the teacher's first time ever teaching a class ever. Yeah. And he had a hard time with the class, and what he kept saying over and over again is, Look, we're going to learn a lot of things. We're going to learn a lot about American history. And you are I know what you're going to do. You're going to take this class and you're going to do good. But then you're going to forget everything I said. You're going to forget everything I ever taught you. But if you remember one thing, remember this. It's going to be on every test. It's going to be the most important thing. I'm giving you the answer right now for one question on every test you take in this class. But just remember, the most important thing you can remember is that Albert B. Fall was the Secretary of the Interior during the Harding <laughs> administration. <laughs> the infamous teapot dongle scandal. And, and my brother and I looked at each other and said, okay, we're going to have to memorize this. Because apparently <laughs> this is the most important thing ever. And it gets, it, it, and that was like in 90, that was like in the year 2000. That was like 16 years ago. Yeah. And he, been like a mirroring 40 and I'm living in Oklahoma and I have a wife and I have kids and I have this managerial job and every once in a while I'll do story time and I'll go kids kids we're gonna read a story it's a Dr. Seuss story you're gonna love it but first we get to that I want to talk about a character that you all love no I'm not talking about Spongebob I'm talking about Albert B. Fall you know who that is kids you don't? Well, he's only the Secretary of the Interior during the Harding administration who was responsible for the infamous Teapot Dome scandal. <laughs> I keep saying this one fucking... No one has any fucking idea what it means except maybe Professor Sam Schmieding and my brother. Hi, everybody. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be writing songs for people, random people, at the Home Depot. Hope you like it. Check out my hair, my hair is awesome. Check out my hair, my hair is awesome. Uh. I'm showing off in a red shirt. I'm showing off in a red shirt. Check me out, I am really awesome and I'm showing off in a red shirt. Lady getting something from the trunk. No way does she have her stuff. Did she drop something? No, she's picking up trash. Picking up trash that's on the street. Picking up trash, trash lady. I want to do you all night long. I am normal, I am normal. Conform, conform. I am normal, check out my shirt. I love khaki shorts, and I'm secretly in love with my best friend, and my khaki shorts. Getting in the van, getting in the van, driving away, driving away, driving away in my van. And I'd like for you to pull my red a lot on this that I haven't actually gotten to make a full backing track for. It's called Insect Cities, and it's about uh, someone taking their clothes off in a park and then peeling off their skin. Cool. <coughs> anyway. You guys are the redhead zombie crowd, you can, you can handle that. Oh yeah. Or some of you are. Some of you may not be. I can't see. You took off your clothes in the middle of the grass, and like the fingers of the sun, the light held you in its grasp. You loved the wind, you mumbled on a park bench. Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, you mumbled like a godsend. The peeling backwards of your skin and the slow open of your ribs made the sound of soft wings and crumpled shirt sleeves. Time caps a letter held in between and dropped from hands that now know things, all now slip from memory. Scattered in the weeds grown around the family tree where the tendency runs and almost gallops, your words crashing endlessly into a cluttered pipe dream where you took off your clothes because they had become unclean. All this preconceived blood on your sleeve and there are needles in your fever dreams. There are fables in these secret things. Cry wolf and howl screams, be strings as beauty sleeps. Petals fall as ant hills dream. Insect cities just out of reach. Put some clothes on, let's be friends.
Are you scared? I'm, I'm really, really scared. Really scared. Since 1927, the American Optics Eyeglass Corporation has had one central goal. To provide top class, high quality eyewear. The hot ass chicks disguised as nerdish bulwark. Whether it's Anne Hathaway in The Princess Diaries, Rachel Lee Cook in She's All That, or Mothra in Destroy All Monsters, the American Optics Eyeglass Corporation is there to further a sexist film trope for cash. Do you know the 1957 Humphrey Bogart classic film The Big Sleep? In that film, Lauren Bacall is a nerdish bookworm with glasses. And who made those glasses? We did. The American Optics Eyeglass Corporation. You're not attractive, you wear glasses. We are back, filthy capitalist big dogs. Fifa la verrue revolution. Fifa la verrue revolution. Fifa la verrue revolution. Director of Batman, Beetlejuice, and Edward Scissorhands now takes you to a completely different world. The true story of a Hollywood legend, Ed Wood. And action! He made movies like no one else. You want to keep moving? You've got to get through that door. Ah, that was perfect. Perfect? Do you know anything about film production? Well, I like to think so. He had an eye for talent. I met Bella Lugosi. I thought he was dead. This is the most uncomfortable coffin I've ever been in. No, he's very much alive. <laughs> you flying saucer? He had a passion for storytelling. Get me transvestites. I need transvestites. You're flashy. They want that. Okay. But they want professionalism. So Nick Sandinelli without losing naivete. What kind of a movie is this? It's science fiction. A heartbreaking romance. Brave robbers from outer space. Brave robbers from what? And he had a secret he couldn't hide. I like to dress in women's clothing. Panties, sweaters, pumps. It's just something I do. You don't like sex with girls? No, I love sex with girls. Wearing their clothes makes me feel closer to them. How can you act so casual when you're dressed like that? All right, everybody, let's finish this picture. Touchstone Pictures presents Johnny Depp. Martin Landau, Sarah Jessica Parker, Patricia Arquette, and Bill Murray in the true story man. of an unforgettable filmmaker. We're making another movie. I got the Church of Beverly Hills to put up the cash. How do you get all your friends to get baptized just so you can make a monster movie? And his legacy that will live forever. How do you burn this off? Shake his legs around. Looks like he's killing. Oh! This is the one. This is the one I'll be remembered for. Ed Wood, a Tim Burton film. Really? Worst film you ever saw. Well, my next one will be better. Hello? I told you that I want to go to that festival in Sweden. No, you said it would be cool to go. Yeah, and then I got the opportunity and I decided Look, I to do it. I don't mind you going. I just wish you would have told me. That's all. Dude, she needs a therapist. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like a year now. And don't forget about all of the beautiful Swedish women you'll meet in June. Okay, guys. That's not her again. Seriously? Babe, what's happening? Danny. I was so very sorry to hear about what happened. I'm sorry. I invited Danny to come to Sweden. You know what she's been going through? Christian says you've got this special week planned. It's sort of a crazy festival. Special ceremonies and dressing up. That sounds fun. Unbelievable. 
Welcome and happy midsummer. Skål! What time is it? 9 p.m. That can't be right. The sky is blue. This is what 9 p.m. is like here. <laughs> How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? It's like another world. Tomorrow's a big day. Is it scary? What is it? It has special properties. <laughs> what am I going through? We just need to acclimate. I don't want to acclimate. I want to go. Absolutely not. What's happening? I don't know why you invited us. That's why you look so guilty right now, because you know. We only do this every 90 years. I was most excited for you to come. My notes say, read old intro. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, old notebook. Uh, okay. This is from episode 251. Uh, Have you heard of Greater Idaho? It's a possible new state which would be Idaho plus a bunch of east a bunch of eastern Oregon countries that are very Republican. Basically Idaho would be replaced with Idaho Mach 2. I don't remember any of that shit. No. Uh really? 
that's weird. Uh, okay, so where's the intro? There it is. Act three, bunny. Act three. Act three. <laughs> <laughs> yes bunny my friend it is time yet again for the third and final act of the pope on film podcast and it is said third act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new same great taste but now half the sugar movie of the week and this week we are doing a super rare part two where we will try once again to figure out how one of the world's most successful plays of all time became the biggest flop of all time with yet another look at the astoundingly awful 2019 musical fucking Cats! Oh, that's fucking weird. You'll find out later. That's amazing. That was amazing. Okay, but we're not doing Cats. We're doing a double feature of uh, Ed Wood and Midsommar. Two movies that are very important to me. This is a double feature picked specifically by me. It's the two movies that have the biggest effect on my gender. Real talk, Bunny. The reason why I chose these two movies are less because of the movies, but more because last last episode. I say last week, but it was like three weeks ago. Yeah. But last week, we discussed the 2024 a24 film i saw the tv glow and oh my god i fucking love that movie oh fuck yeah that hit me like a fucking sledgehammer and it was one of those things where i saw the movie and i went huh that's the movie and then i went and i i, I talked to my wife natasha and she's like how was the movie and then it wasn't until i started talking to her about it that i realized how powerful it was for me and yeah. by the end, like, I watched the movie, and I liked it, but then when I'm explaining it to Natasha, that's when I started crying. So then I watched it again, and, and it, it, oh my god, I love this movie so much. It does such a great job explaining what it is like for trans people to transition. It does a great job explaining that. And it in does such a, great a job subtle, quiet way where, you know... I I keep going back and I pick up another piece and I pick yeah. up another piece and I pick up another piece. Every time you go through this fucking movie. Yeah. And I absolutely love this film. And, and I feel like it, well, one of the main reasons why I picked these two movies is I feel like if you want to get to know me better, get to know how May Lin came about. You could watch I Saw the TV Glow and get a good sort of understanding of what it is like to go through a transition such as this. You just got to replace the pink opaque with Edward and Midsommar. There you go. It is literally, it, it is very, very difficult to be a trans person, especially right now in this, the year of our Lord, 2024. It, on this planet, it basically feels like in order to become trans, in order to transition, you have to bury yourself alive and then come out a stronger, different, completely different person. Or uh, another way to explain that would be Mei Lin, me, got Steve, drugged him, then put his body inside of a bear carcass. Yeah. And then put that bear carcass inside of, let's say, a yellow pyramid. Yeah. And, uh, oh, just FYI, uh, um, uh, old Greg is still there. Ah, okay. Along with this painting, which is uh, hanging up on Danny's wall in the park. There's Danny right there. And uh, I painted this on Amber's birthday. I was really proud of it. Be kind of a bitch. And then there's <laughs> Malin's Pyramid. Because that's basically what I did to become a woman. I got uh, 
the person who I was and I put him in a bear and I put that bear inside of a pyramid and I set the pyramid on fire and now I feel much better. So that's why I chose this week's film. First off, <coughs> let's just talk about the films for a second. Ed Wood's a weird thing for me to watch now. Yeah. Why? Number of reasons. So many different reasons. So many different reasons. Number one. Uh, Johnny Depp does an amazing job in this film. He does a great job. He's incredible, and I absolutely love him. And you you watch this film, and it's like, wow, you're really embodying this Ed Wood as a person and as a spirit, and you're really giving him life. And there's a good possibility when you go home, your bed's going to be covered in woman's shit. <laughs> Just reeking of of shit. And and how many drugs are you on while you're making this movie? Yeah. Incredible actor. Amazing actor. But he was on some shit. We know that now. Yeah. And then it, it, I actually got into a into an argument conversation on Twitter about this recently. But as the founder of the Church of Ed Wood in the 90s, actual thing worth a Google, a lot of people expect me to have gone a specific way in regards to the Amber Heard trial. But the way that I see it is Johnny Depp was a lying, controlling, violent, uh, manipulative person who was a, who's an addict and is on a bunch of drugs. And it looks like maybe the woman he was dating was the exact same way. So they yeah. are both two problematic people, but most of America will just throw one away and stay with the person who had scissors for fingers when they were a child. I and tried so hard not to pay attention to that whole fucking trial. It was impossible. I was really, really pissed off that I was having to hear about this trial as much as I was, seeing as the Grizzling Maxwell trial was going on at the exact same fucking time that we heard nothing about. Nothing. Nothing about. As far as the overall situation goes, as far as I understand, she won a case in the UK. Back to Johnny Depp. Not Grizzling. Amber Heard won a case in the UK. Johnny Depp won one in America. 50-50, tie score. Can we fucking shut up about it already? No. That is why I'm trying to get the both of them this March at WrestleMania 41 in a hell of a cell. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, hell in a cell. No holds barred. In fact, it's not going to be a first blood match. First shit match. Oh. First of its kind. It's going to be amazing. The money we are going to make from this wrestling match, unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like all the, the, the big wrestling matches of all time. Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, Stone Cold and The Rock. Um, the big boss man. And Crash Holly, you know, the major one. Yeah. It's going to be huge. But so many people were coming to me during that trial and being like, hey, Reverend Steve, so, so glad I found you here. Have you been following this trial thing? Man, isn't him, Amber Heard a lying bitch? She should just go to hell, that fucking. And, and it's like, damn, dude, okay. I guess everyone just assumes this. But, like, I am trying to get to a point now where I do like, like, two Kanye West songs. Yeah. I, and I'm starting to get to that age where it's like, I'm trying really hard to separate the art from the artist. Yeah. But I have a, I have a really hard time with that. Okay, full disclosure. Full disclosure. 
Kid Rock's a piece of shit. He's an asshole. He's a far right douchebag. Yeah. He is a horrible person. But if I'm in the car and fucking cowboy comes on, I will be singing every word of that song. There you go. Yeah. Fucking, I hate how much I love that song. <laughs> yes. So it's so I, I I try and go okay. Then I'm going to watch Ed Wood, but it's kind of difficult because it's like okay, here's Johnny Depp, yeah. and, and and then uh, Criswell is Jeremy Jones. Oh God, yeah. And that's really difficult because of all the things that he. It, there's a reason why you don't see him anymore. So that's kind of fucked up. And then Bill Murray. He's kind of icky now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there have been stories and rumors, nothing concrete yet, but you watch Bill Murray now and you go. Matter of time, matter of time. It's the yeah. same way I feel whenever I see Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, nothing yet. Yeah. But eventually, the fit's going to hit the sham, and someone's going to have to stay after school. Yeah. And so, watching Bill Murray, I have a hard time with that. And Okay, then... but you know what? But since we're on this subject, you know what does hurt, though? Huh. Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Doesn't that just hurt? Yeah. Like, motherfucker. It's, it especially hurts because I have been hoping and hoping and hoping that Disney or DreamWorks or the people who made Coraline, somebody get it, would get off their butt and make an, an animated or stop motion animation or even a live action, some sort of film of Neil Gaiman's other kids' book, The Graveyard Book. Yeah. It's such a good book. It is literally just the jungle book, except a, a kid's family, a, a young baby's family is murdered. The, the baby ends up getting out of the house and crawling across the street to the graveyard. It's just the jungle book, but with uh, vampires and ghosts and which is it's just so fucking good and i can absolutely see a Coraline version of the graveyard book and i've been hoping and hoping every year that like someone turns this into a movie yeah. and now those chances are fucking gone because of neil young yeah oh the author of the book how to talk to girls at parties <laughs> did he wrote what he he made this he made this uh this uh graphic novel story called How to Talk to Girls at Parties. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But he's so, he just he just always comes off as such a nice English gentleman, mm -hmm. you know? Very mm -hmm. polite. A lot of yeah. sweet stories about things he's done, you know. Stuff like that. And then it's like, damn. You know, just like disappointing. Yeah. I really like uh, the book and the first season of the TV show Good Omens. I never bothered seeing the second season. And now this season, and Neil Gaiman's going to be stepping back from that. But it's like, nah, I'm already. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. But I've never been one of those hardcore Neil Gaiman fans. No, like no. it does. It does hurt, but like also, I'm I'm not losing any sleep over. It. Okay, look. Let me put it this way: I read Sandman. Pretty much stops there. Yeah. Okay. You know. I always appreciated but he, Neil but, you Gaiman. Know, he pops up here and there. You know, you're watching things <clears throat> about comic books and stuff, and. Oh, there's Neil Gaiman, and he just always comes across as just a really, really just nice. Like, Neil Gaiman wouldn't do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 
and 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 I still can't believe these things people are saying about Bill Cosby. I love his pudding pops. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm really disappointed in him. Now that I think about it, though, his pudding pops were the share. I did like those pudding pops. Yeah. Those pudding pops were very good. But it's difficult to watch Ed Wood now, but I still stand by. It's obvious that, you know, ever since I was probably Eleanor's age, I was uh, dressing as a woman. And then my parents found out about it. My brother found out about it. And they didn't understand. And they just labeled me as like a pervert and a freak, which made me stay in the closet for way longer than I should have. Yeah. But every girlfriend I had, I would always do the like, oh my gosh, uh, Debbie, Sarah, you know what we should do? You should give me a makeover. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, just for laughs. Wouldn't that be <laughs> hilarious? And and I one of my one of my first memories growing up was it was late at night and the whole family was in the kitchen and there were steaks and barbecuing and and uh my parents were hanging out and talking with us and being friendly so it must have been a friday or a saturday night and they were drinking yeah so my dad says uh stevie stevie come here come here come here people say that men are stronger than women and this is not true Women are way stronger than men. And automatically, I knew that some shit was up because I grew up in a very traditionally Hispanic family, meaning sexist as hell. My yeah. mom couldn't be in charge of the bank account because women are horrible with money. My dad always drove because women are horrible drivers and just a million little things like that. Yeah. So I, my dad was suddenly being like, gay feminism and so i knew something was up and he said i mean sure men are more are physically stronger than women but women are stronger emotion because they take care of the children and because they clean the house and also you know what the hardest thing in the world is stevie wearing heels oh. that's the hardest thing ever no guy can wear heels and i'm like okay Hold my chocolate milk, bitch. And then went into the closet and grabbed the highest heels that my mom owned. And I spent the entire evening just wearing my mom's heels. Like dancing around in them. And yeah. my parents thought it was funny then. But like uh, Ed Wood says in uh, Glenn or Glenda, then one day it wasn't Halloween any longer. <laughs> So then I saw the movie Ed Wood and I became obsessed with Ed Wood. And now I realized that this was just one of the billion clues that I was trans. Because, yeah. I mean, I started a fucking religion based on Ed Wood in the 90s. That, that says a lot. Yeah. But, and I do think that if Ed Wood were alive today, if he if he came into existence now yeah that he would see society and how attitudes have changed and he would be a woman i i, I think so i i think glenda glenda shows that quite a lot yeah i i absolutely 100 percent think that and so you kind of helped me realize this bunny but I have reached peak Ed Woodedness. Uh, okay. I have transcended. That was the yes. word that you used. Yes, I you have, have transcended. I I am such a huge Ed Wood fan that I'm a woman now. There so, you go. And I do occasionally, like a few times a year, hear from people who were big fans of the Church of Ed Wood back then and are now trans really? and so that's kind of cool yeah so i am i am l literally the edward to transgender pipeline it's all one person right here and it's me and i hear from a lot of people who have done this but it didn't kick until i saw midsummer yeah 
it didn't kick until I saw Midsommar. I remember seeing Midsommar in theaters the the day it came out, and it's like, oh, it's a horror movie, but it's all bright and in the daytime. Okay. I'll actually be able to see shit that goes on. I hate going to the movies, going to a horror movie, and it, it's all in the dark. If I'm going into a, a mysterious house that might be haunted, first thing I'm doing, I'm turning on all the fucking lights. Yeah. But uh, I saw Midsommar, and... Oh, you know what I love? When a scene in a movie is so fucked up that everyone just starts talking. Everyone in the theater yeah. just starts talking. That happened during the Trastupa ritual, where yeah. the old guy is jumping off. The, the woman and the man are jumping off. Oh, yeah. Everyone in the theater was suddenly just talking out loud because they were losing their fucking shit. Yeah. And then the guy with the mallet. Oh, man. There were like 12 other people in the theater, and they were all talking as if they were just like at a bar. Just, oh, my God. Is this? No. With what? And everyone's laughing and stuff. It was the fucking Well, but best. that's that's like also a, a film theory that I have that like I don't know so much about people who've seen Midsommar, but like the thing and Speed Racer are my two examples where they bomb at the box office because you're just giving people too much to look at. They have too much sensory input. Yeah. And and therefore they they don't follow the story after that. Yeah. I, I would bet you there would be a similar effect with Midsommar in that scene in particular. You've just yeah. given people way too much to look at. Yeah. And then I edited it on Twitter and I added the song It's Raining Men to that scene. I'm really proud of that. Okay. As the old guy jumps off the cliff. It's raining men. Hallelujah. It's a raining man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But I saw that movie, I think, six times in theaters. I really? saw the director's cut. I saw the director's cut in theaters twice. Uh it, the movie came out at the exact right point because at the end of 2018, my wife got me the AMC A-list membership. Yeah. So I get three free movies a week for $24.95 a month. And so at that time, my wife said, you need to get out of the house more. Go to three movies a week. And so I would force myself to see 90% of everything that came out at that period in time. And I absolutely know that Midsommar is not something that I would have paid for. Yeah. Would not have paid to see that movie. But I did, and I loved it, and I just kept going over and over again. And eventually I realized the fact that, like, it took a while for me to process it, but I was watching the movie, and I wanted to be Danny. I wanted yeah. to get all of the problems of my life and put them in a pyramid and burn that motherfucker down. And that is basically what I did. And now yeah. I'm May Lynn. Oh, definitely. Definitely oh, after you saw that fucking movie, you wanted to be Danny. Did, don't you have yeah. a May Queen head thing Outfit? somewhere? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I do. I do. It's in my... I almost uh, my expected costume. you to be wearing it when we came back from the break. I I took a bath right before yeah. we recorded. And it, when I got out of that bath, I'm like, okay. Fuck it. No costume changes. No nothing. I'm putting on yeah. something comfy and I'm leaving it on because it's the next to last episode, bitches. Yeah. I mean, that's but, yeah. that's why, like, for a uh, goddamn 10 minute warning, hmm. That that's why for me kind of running up to your, what, official announcement, whatever happened, I, I don't even remember. Wasn't too terribly a surprise because after this movie, you yeah. wanted to be Danny like fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the thing that I tell people is that there's a lot of people who I 
am friends with who I worked with for a period of time or I went to school with and we kind of knew each other a little bit, but not a lot. And those people or uh, like cousins or uncles and aunts that I didn't really, that I wasn't really close with. And when those people find out that I'm trans, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm, I, good for you. I would love to sit down with you and pick your brain. You know, <laughs> I have so many questions. I, good for you living your truth. But I think, but like the people who knew me, knew me, yeah. who really knew me, knew me. Like, I can assume that uh, most of my exes, like Sarah Snow, would be yeah. like, yeah, okay. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I think Tom messaged me like a year into my transition saying, hey, about time. And it's like, oh, really? About time? Well, maybe you should have fucking, maybe you could have stuck around and helped me through this in my 20s, you son of a bitch, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. So, yeah, if you knew me, yeah. really knew me, not a surprise. If you casually knew me, this probably blew your ass away. But but what was impressive to me, because, like, this whole time doing podcasts, I have been all over your fucking Facebook pictures, looking uh -huh. for shit to use for artwork for the show and stuff like that. Yeah. Always some kind of a mug. Always some kind of a silly yeah. face. Always a, some yeah. kind of a, a a look, you know? An act. Something you were hiding behind. They were growing amusing up, as fucking hell. But Growing up, I had no idea how to smile. Yeah. I had no idea how to smile. Oh, just smile. It comes naturally. And it's like, how? I don't know how. I am incapable of smiling. So at a very early age, I adopted this fake smile that looked shitty and that made people laugh. And so whenever anyone would yeah. say, smile, I'd go. And so that's me smiling in like 80% yeah. of the pictures of me as a guy. So once you started that's transitioning and accepted yourself, that was a huge fucking change. That oh, was yeah. a huge change. And those oh, yeah. were pictures of somebody who was genuinely happy. Heck yeah. So it was like really remarkable to see. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I absolutely love it. And it, I say that Midsommar was the movie that cracked my egg. Like uh, Justice Smith in I Saw the TV Glow with Pink Opaque. And I want to get the pink opaque tattoo right here on my yeah. lower back, right below my uh, neck. Um, <coughs> but it was Midsommar that fully cracked my egg. But it was Ed Wood where my egg has always just been fine. And then I saw Ed Wood and I heard the egg make a noise. And I'm like, oh, shit, was that a crack? I didn't know. I didn't even know these could crack. Okay. Well, I better take really good care of it. But then finally the cracking actually happened with Midsommar. Yeah. There's like a 24, 25 year gap between these movies. And it, the only, the only part, part of my transition that I regret is the fact that I didn't transition sooner, but also it is probably a really good thing that I wasn't, a insanely drunk 20 year old trans woman yeah like i think it my transition happening in the in, in my 40s it was just the absolute perfect time because i'm in a <coughs> wonderful marriage with my wife and you know i've got kids and it it was just the absolute perfect time for me to transition was in my 40s but now i'm trying to because no one told me that I didn't even know that transitioning was a thing. I, I, I didn't know that this was something that people could do. And so now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I saw the TV glow everyone and just, there is still time. That's, that's the whole thing, takeaway from I saw the TV glow. There is still time. And I'm trying to let everyone know there is still time. 
There is still time. Look at me. I was in my 40s and had no freaking idea what I'm talking about. But these are real. These are real. I <laughs> did it. There is still time. But right now, there's about four minutes and 15 seconds. And so that's all I've got this week yes. for this week's movie. The next to last episode of the podcast in two weeks, October 6th, on the exact date that we started the podcast yes. 10 years ago, we will be ending it. Funny, what will we be watching for our last movie? This no, is this has it. been pretty tough. This has been pretty tough. You know, you want to go out on something, you know. Um, but in the end, I want another bite at the apple. We're doing I Saw the TV Glow again. Really? Yeah. You're doing I Saw the TV Glow again? Yeah, because I also think if you take all the movies we've done twice, that kind of sums us up. The Giant Big Claw, hat. Cats, uh, Ed Wood, Midsommar, and I saw the TV glow. Fuck, we did uh, Night of the Living Dead four times. Well, that episode. doesn't quite count. Yeah, I did I think of that. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, 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 there's more to talk about. There's a lot more there to is. talk about. This there's a lot movie. more to talk about. I'm down with that. I'm absolutely down with that. So next week, we're finishing off the podcast with a second look at I Saw the TV Glow. Very excited about that. Getting a deep dive of that bitch. So that's next week. But now that I look back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, Willem Dafoe, and um, the Malaysian flight that disappeared, Hurricane Florence, uh... The Rise of Skywalker, Batman v Superman. I gotta say, Bonnie, I think that this episode, with very little writing, uh, I think this episode was a pretty good episode. Again. This has been a okay. damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt that same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction, not me. And I, I you know, I don't want to step on any toes here. But yes, I concur. With your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin. And on behalf of Maxwell and Eleanor and, and Q, and not Natasha and Amber, who are in the East Coast right now, riding yeah. subways and catching taxis, not that I'm jealous or bitter in any way. I love being the one that stays at home to take care of these kids. I just like to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. TVs. And you TVs? Eleanor. 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 Cookie. Cookie? Okay, cookie. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Hey, I'm going to actually get to finish the episode. Do, 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 do. Steady, papa, do, wow. Cut and print. And put it on a cookie. That's very cute. And cut.